Ortiz. the top stories of the news. Governor Yi Sun-wik says PDP's former national chairman Yeo Cha Ayu lacks electoral value. NAD rejects the five-year compulsory service bill proposed by the House of Representatives. On the foreign scene, Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen condemns China's military exercises around the self-ruled island. Good afternoon and welcome to Spring News at 12 on Western Spring Television. My name is Okpaya Muni. We begin with politics. River State Governor Yesum Wike has mocked a former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Yocha Ayu, over the party's failure in the 2023 presidential election. Wike, who championed the call for Ayu's resignation in the lead up to the elections, claimed the Benue born PDP chieftain has no electoral value. The government in a media chat with journalists in Port Harcourt today said Ayu had nothing to offer the party. While the PDP has appointed an acting national chairman, Wicked says the development means little, expressing happiness that Ayu did not quit as chairman before the election. And that what I was talking that we have exposed Ayu that he has nothing to offer the, the party. Uh, which, uh, from the result, that showed that they have not offered the party. And uh, the constitution of the party allows the, uh, if a chairman leaves, the deputy chairman from that zone will be the active uh, chairman. <coughs> you see, for me, it's not about only your argue. It's about what you have to offer. Take, for example, now, have, uh, that my wound has called me over and I said, listen, uh, I hear you are the acting chairman now, as provided by the constitution. Uh, you have to show difference. You have opportunity. There will be primaries. Elections will come. In the meantime, the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, has described the conduct of personnel during the recently held general elections as professional. The COS gave a commendation at a launching yesterday organized for troops of the Operation Adin Kai, Northeast Joint Task Force, to commemorate the Easter season at the Mamalari Barracks Officers Mess Medigori, Bruno State. A staff of the nation was proud of the professionalism displayed, displayed all through the electionary period. Yaya was represented by Theater Commander Operation Adin Kai, Major General Koko Isoni paid tribute to fallen heroes and wounded personnel receiving medical attention across military facilities. In Katsina, the newly installed caretaker committee chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Dr. Abrahaman Usman, has vowed to reconcile all aggrieved party ex co members recently dissolved by the PDP National Working Committee. He also promised to reposition and reset the party in the right direction in an effort to move it forward. Dr. Usman made the promise shortly after the outgoing chairman of the party, Honorable Lawal Dambachi, handed over the realm of office to him. He explained during the inaugural meeting held at the party headquarters in Katina yesterday that the newly constituted committee is going to take off the party and will not leave any stone unturned in ensuring that the art and soul of the party are set. Meanwhile, Vice Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the Northwest, Sally Lukman, says any Muslim aspiring to be Senate President does not respect the Constitution and the party. Mr. Lukman, uh, Lukman made the remark on the grounds that President-elect Bola Tinubu and Vice President-elect Kashim Shatima are both Muslims. The APC National Working Committee member said any attempt to elect a Muslim as Senate President would promote the dominance of Muslims in the federal government. Mr. Lukman said such a development would be injurious to national unity. He said it is embarrassing that some of the aspiring, aspiring to be leaders in the legislature are going about it unethically. Away from politics, the Nigerian police force has condemned the assault of a yet-to-be-identified man by some officers in a viral video. 
A viral video shared on social media showed the moment a police officer was beating and slapping a man in Portacourt, River State. Force Public Relations Officer CSP Olumu Iwadejobi made this known on his Twitter handle yesterday. He said the River State Command has been ordered to fish out the officers, adding that the behavior of the officers were unpolice and unethical. He noted that whatever the man must have done, he didn't deserve the beating. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, said its operatives have arrested 23 suspected drug peddlers and secured 17 convictions in River State. The NDLEA River State Command said a total of 208,864 kilograms of drugs were recovered from suspects, but included six females. The State Command's Public Affairs Officer, Emmanuel Obumbada, disclosed this in a statement, noting that the success were recorded in March. Mr. Obumbada said the 17 suspects convicted by the Federal High Court in Port Accord are currently serving various jail terms at the Port Accord Correctional Center. To health matters, the National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, has opposed the House of Representatives' bill mandating Nigeria-trained medical and dental practitioners to practice for five years before being granted full license. NAD made its position known in a communique issued at the end of Emergency Extended National Officers Committee NOC meeting of the association. According to the statement released yesterday, the resident doctor is expressed shock by the action of a sponsor of the bill, Honorable Ganil Johnson, APC Lagos. The doctors also decried the non-payment of salaries of members by the federal government as the current administration gradually winds down. Here in Ocean State, the Federal Safety Corps has said that 14 passengers escaped death in an accident that occurred on the Bogoni Baron Expressway. The state sector commander, Henry Benamesia, made this known in a statement issued by the command spokesperson, Agnes Ogumbemi, yesterday in Oshobo. He said that a private uh, Hyundai Jeep had a head-on collision with another vehicle on Ashkola to Tasakria at the Orilo Junction, Epiphilin Station, close to the Sasha Bridge. The Mr. Mr. Benamesia disclosed that the accident occurred due to speeding leading to the loss of control by one of the vehicles, adding that 14 persons were involved in the accident without any casualty. In Anambra State, Governor Chukuma Soludo has tasked the newly inaugurated members of a state internal revenue service to increase the state's internally generated revenue, describing the agency as the lifeblood of every government. Governor Soludo disclosed this yesterday during the inauguration of members of the board at Governor's Lodge, Amalvia. The governor reminded them that the state had yet to start generating up to 3 billion naira a month on IGL and that an over a 180% turnaround on the state revenue is required as the 2023 budget depends on it. In like manner, the board of Anambra State Housing Development Corporation were inaugurated with a charge to bring about a positive disruptive change in the sector and bridge the gap of millions of housing deficit in the state. The board chaired by former Deputy Governor of Anambra Emeka Subeudu was also mandated to develop housing structures that would suit the desires of the state. Uh, evaluation every three months. Every three months, whatever you need with this board. If it doesn't work, this is one board uh, that might have high mortality rates. So this board has a life of the next three months. Watching Spring News at 12 on Western Spring Television. We'll be right back after this break.
also known as Ekite Parapo War, was waged among Yoruba main ethnic groups which emerged from the ruins of the falling Oyo Empire that were desperate to replace the awesome powers hitherto wielded by the Alafi of Oyo. The Kirige War is defined as a conflict of confederacy and unity political system championed by Yorubas of different socio-economic and the political interests. The Ibado military aristocrats felt they deserved a dominant position for saving Yoruba land from being totally submerged by the Fulanese by their victory in the Oshobo War of 1840 and the Ijaya War of 1862. Kirige War that took its name from the booming motor sounds of European arms festered for so long because the Industrial Revolution in Europe provoked high standards of slaves. The 16-year civil war also caused the emergence of new powerful kingdoms like Ibadan and the rise of powerful personalities like Oluyole, Ogumola, Kurumi, Latosha, Shodeke, Fabumi, and Ogedengbe. One of the fallouts of Kirij War was the birth of creative political and leadership structure in Yoruba land that was a blend of federalism and the autocratic monarchical system. Western Spring Television identifies Kirij War as a watershed event. Samuel Laduke Akintola was a frontal figure in the historical moves that birthed an independent Nigeria from colonial Britain. As a freedom activist, he deployed his wits, energy, intellect and oratory skills to prepare the grounds for constitutional talks that eventually culminated in the country's independence in 1960. The 13th Ariyo of Yoruba land cut his teeth as a politician when he became a foundation member of Action Group, the dominant political party in the Western region, and was elected the party's parliamentary leader of opposition at the Federal House of Representatives. The crisis in the Action Group, which pitched Samuel Laduki Akintola against his leader, was not only a sore point in his colorful political life, but a reversal of gains which characterized the exemplary leadership of Awulowo Akintola Premiership. 23 years after his death, Oyo State University of Technology Obumosho was renamed Samuel Laduki Akintola University of Technology to keep his memory alive. Western Spring Television identifies Samuel Laduki Akintola as a major character in history. The Korean War of 1950-1953 pitched North and South Korea against each other in response to intrigues by nations beyond their border with different interests from those canvassed by the two brother nations. The Korean War had all the nuances of an external conflict induced by powers that were interested in subjugating North and South Korea. Japan had leveraged on its military power to annex Korea in 1900 and imposed a military union that did not sit well with the citizens. Japan not only lost its war of conquest against Korea, all its powers were obliterated by the effect of the World War II. The end of World War II got Korea divided into two nations along 38 parallel lines by the instrumentality of the United States of America and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. The Korean War lapsed into a Cold War when it stopped the prying eyes of external forces into the internal affairs of a nation now divided along its north and southern territories. Western Spring Television identifies the Korean War as a major event in history. Welcome back on Spring News at 12 on Western Spring Television. Now to the rest of the stories. President Muhammad Bari is expected to depart the country for Saudi Arabia on his last official visit as Nigerian president. The presidential spokesman Gadda Bashir disclosed this, noting that the president will be in the Arab nation from April 11 to 19. 
In a statement yesterday, Mr. Sheo said the president will be accompanied by his aides and will perform Umrah the lesser pilgrimage during the visit. Moving on, the management of Friesland Campina Wapco Niger PLC manufacturers of pig milk has apologized to the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, for using the crucifixion of Jesus Christ as a metaphor to promote the product on Good Friday. While acknowledging the sensitivity of a social media post, considering the sobriety of the season, the organization said the advert was neither intended to make light of the significance of the season, nor to inordinately exploit the unmatched sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The executive director of Friesland Campina Wamco Nigeria PLC, Ore Famuriwa, expressed remorse in a letter to the president of Cannes, Archbishop Daniel Oko, yesterday. The organization further restated its commitment to maintaining the respect of all religious laws, tenets, and guidelines, adding that the social media advertisement has been withdrawn. Talking business, amid the attacks on Ukraine, Nigeria imported 39.68 billion euro worth of goods from Russia, representing about 85% increase from 2021. According to the foreign trade reports of the National Bureau of Statistics, for 2022, the total imports from Russia aged 21.84 billion naira in quarter two 2022, a massive increase from the 8.98 billion naira in the first quarter. The foreign trade report also showed that only 1.71 billion naira worth of goods was imported from Russia in the third quarter, a decline of 92.17% from the second quarter. By the fourth quarter, Nigeria imported 7.15 billion naira worth of goods from Russia, an increase of 318.13% from the previous quarter. Meanwhile, Australia says it is inching closer to stabilizing its fraught relationship with China as the two countries moved to resolve a festering trade dispute over Bali exports. The once costly trading relationship has soured in recent years as Australia sought closer military ties with the United States and China vied for influence in the Pacific. Beijing slapped FT tariffs on key commodities such as barley, beef and wine in 2020 at the height of a bitter dispute inflamed by Australia's former conservative government with Australia retaliating by complaining to the World Trade Organization alleging that China had breached international obligations. In the latest sign of thawing tensions between the two countries, Foreign Minister Penny Wong said Australia would be temporarily suspending its complaint after China had agreed to review its Bali tariffs. She further stated that it was in the interest of both countries for this trade impediment to be removed. We have made clear that we believe there is no justification for the measures that China introduced in relation to Bali. We have also made clear uh, that we believe it is in both countries' interests uh, for these trade impediments to be re removed. So today I can confirm that China has agreed to undertake an expedited review of the duties imposed on Australian barley over a three-month period, which may extend to a fourth if required. In return, we have agreed to temporarily suspend the World Trade Organization dispute for the agreed review period. Obviously, if the duties are not lifted at the end of the review period, we will resume our dispute in the double. On the foreign scene, Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen has condemned China over its three days of military exercises around the several islands, saying they were irresponsible and a threat to regional stability. Beijing wrapped up its war games, which simulated strikes on the territory of 23 million people on April 10, although the Taiwanese Defense Ministry said eight Chinese vessels continued to operate in the waters surrounding Taiwan this morning. The news began after Ms. Tsai held an high-profile meeting with the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy, during a trip to Central America. Ms. Tsai, in a Facebook post yesterday, accused China of using the military exercises to cause instability in Taiwan and the region. Tsai, portrayed as a separatist by China, said visits to friendly countries were a long-term practice and expected by the people of Taiwan. 
In the meantime, the U.S. and uh, the Philippines are holding their largest ever joint military drills, a day after China concluded large-scale exercises around Taiwan. Filipino and U.S. officials say the drills show their commitment to peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific region that is open and free. Washington, at last month, announced that the annual Balikatan exercise with the Philippines will be their largest ever, involving more than 17,000 troops, including 12,000 from the U.S. The two-week Balikatan operation will also see the militaries execute a drill to blow up a mock target warship in the South China Sea, a move that could incur China's wrath. This comes as China concluded its three days military drill in the Taiwan Strait, rehearsing blockades of Taiwan in response to the island's leader meeting with the U.S. House Speaker last week. While in the U.S., police says that five people were killed when an employee opened fire at a bank in Louisville, Kentucky, and live streamed the attack on Instagram. The victims were aged between 40 and 64. Among the nine others injured was a rookie police officer who had graduated to the force just two weeks ago. The officer was shot in the head and is too critical after brain surgery. The shooting took place at the old National Bank in the city center at about 8.30 local time, with police responding within three minutes and fatally shot the attacker in an exchange of gunfire. Uh, during this exchange of, of gunfire, one is currently in surgery at University of Louisville Hospital. At least four more victims were confirmed to be deceased inside the location, as well as eight that are now currently being treated at the University Hospital. Two are critical, one of those being the officer. We're currently working to identify all of the victims, work with their families for reunification and provide services to the families and the victims. The investigation, I want to re reiterate, is ongoing. This will be a, a long scene. It will take uh, pretty much into the night. Um, so I still ask that the public avoid the area. I want to reiterate that there is no active threat. Uh, we believe this is a lone uh, gunman involved in this that did have a connection to the bank. We're trying to establish what that connection was to the business, but it appears he was a previous employee. To some sports stories, Leicester City has named former Aston Villa coach Dean Smith as their new manager until the end of the season. Smith, 52, left Norwich earlier this season after previous spells at Aston Villa and Brentford. Leicester had huge trouble in the relegation zone following Saturday's home defeat by Bournemouth, two, months, two points from safety with eight games left. Smith told the club website that the challenge in front of him was clear but it's one himself and his coaching team have experienced before, stating he believes the club will survive relegation this season. Craig Shakespeare returns to the King Power Stadium as Smith's assistant manager with former England captain John Terry also joining his former boss at the King Power Stadium. Smith's first game in charge of Leicester is away to Premier League champions Manchester City on Saturday. And Chelsea defender Kalido Kolebali believes interim boss Frank Lambert is the right man to guide the club out of a difficult situation. Lampard, Lampard Chelsea's all-time leading scorer, returned as manager until the end of the season, having replaced the sagged Graham Porter. The Blues are 11th in the Premier League and face holders Real Madrid in the Champions League quarterfinals with the first leg on Wednesday. But Senegal captain Koulibaly, speaking in an interview, said the side was aiming to reach something big this year. Koulibaly admitting the situation was difficult for everybody, including the club manager and supporters, said the players will give everything to get out of a situation and make them happy. Before we end the news, here is a recap of our top stories. River State Governor Yesub Wike has mugged a former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Iocha Ayu, over the party's failure in the 2023 presidential election. The National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, has opposed the House of Representatives bill mandating Nigeria trained medical and dental practitioners to practice for five years before being granted full license. On the foreign scene, Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen has condemned China over its three days of military exercises around the several islands, saying they were irresponsible and a threat to regional stability. 
You can follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Western Spring Television. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. That ends Spring News at 12. I am Okpaya Muni. Thanks for watching. Thank you.